Hello and welcome to another Red Gamer Tech video and myself Amata where today we're going to be as always discussing the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Now today I have a couple of pieces from Intel to kick things off so let's get started with an interesting move to help ease the 14nm silicon constraints. Now of course myself and Paul have discussed a few times now the supply issues that Intel have been having with 14nm. Of course 14nm is being spread rather thin when it comes to architecture and of course the silicon that, that is used to make it has been in rather short supply due to various reasons and of course the fact that 10nm has been delayed and delayed and delayed. So of course Intel has been working to try and resolve this. Now the move that they've made is rather interesting. They have decided to move the H310 chipset to an old process, 22NM to be exact. Now this comes to us thanks to etechnics.com and there is going to be a link in the description below this video and you can see that there is a leaked image. And if we take a look at this leaked image for a second, you can obviously see that the 22NM H310 is a fair bit bigger than its 14NM counterpart, but in terms of how it actually functions and the effect for the user, it is basically going to be exactly the same. The only difference is a very slight increase in the amount of power draw. So basically we are seeing Intel try and focus 14NM, the supply that it does have of this, for its higher end CPUs. So they're just trying to ease the strain on the silicon that they do have and of course just moving this lower end chipset over to 22NM. So again, not a huge difference for the user but an interesting move nonetheless and while undoubtedly we are still going to be seeing supply issues and price increases and so on and so forth this is definitely going to make a difference to Intel's supply issues. Now 22NM has been around for ages so of course we're not going to have any yield issues and all that sort of stuff so while this is by no means going to resolve it you know you know bing okay that's all fixed but it's definitely not going to hurt and of course again just ease the strain on their 14NM supply. So let's move on to our second item of today, which is regarding the 9900K and 9700K. So what we have here is a rather interesting report from Eurocom that kind of confirms something that we've already heard a few times now, and that is that the 9900K and 9700K are both going to be soldered. Now this report actually comes to us from Eurocom, a company that creates high-end gaming and workstation laptops, and they have basically confirmed it, yep, the 9900K and 9700K will ship with a soldered IHS. Now they've also further confirmed something that I would say is rather obvious that the older motherboards, the 300 series motherboards will require a BIOS update to support the ninth generation and without this they won't work. That's not really all that shocking to be honest. But we do have a quote here from them which says quotes new Intel i9 9900K and i7 9700K CPUs are coming with gold soldered TIM IHS to the CPU die. This should help manage the temperatures for the higher clock CPUs and also help with achieving higher clocked frequencies. Our Sky C super laptops are ready for 9900K slash 9700K. So this is just a nice confirmation of a thing that we have heard a few times now and definitely gets a big thumbs up from me. So let's move over to Camp AMD, shall we? Now this is something rather curious and definitely made me raise an eyebrow when I read it, to be quite honest with you, because, well, apparently we haven't heard the last from the Polaris architecture, as we may be seeing another rebranded AMD Polaris graphics card if we are to believe what we have seen from the latest AMD GPU Linux kernel patch. So basically what we have here is a new PCI ID being spotted in the latest patch, which will be linked in the description below, called 0x6FDF. Just rolls off the tongue, I'm sure you would agree. Now, this was spotted by the folks over at Foronix, and they have rightfully pointed out that as far as I can recall and as far as my research has been able to dig up, there's not been any mention of this previously even existing Radeon graphics cards or anywhere else on the internet. So obviously there's a few possibilities that this could just be something that's 
forgotten to be deleted or something like that. Or it could just be, hey, here's another rebranded Polaris. Is of course, everyone's kind of wondering what AMD are going to do now versus NVIDIA. And obviously, I highly doubt this is going to be something that's going to be taking on Turing in terms of raw performance specs and so on. But it might be something like, hey, here's a, here's a really good mid-range card, that sort of thing. There's some people throwing around the possibility that it could be Polaris 7NM or the rumoured Polaris 30, which of course we discussed what feels like eons ago now. The possibilities are, of course, fairly, not limitless, but there's a few. There's a few options it could be, but it's most likely going to be a rebrand again. Whether or not that's a good thing, it really depends what, if anything, this brings to the table in terms of new specs. I think... If it's just sort of the same with slight improvements again, like we saw with the 580s, people might just go, oh, another one? Really? But if it actually brings something interesting to the table, then the discussion around it could be quite different. Of course, with literally only this piece of information, it's impossible to speculate as to what this could actually be. But it is interesting nonetheless. Of course, this could turn out to be nothing at all. But consider my eyebrow duly hoisted, my friends. So we're going to finish things up today with some benchmarks for the iPhone XS versus OnePlus versus Note 9. Now these have actually been conducted by the folks over at tomsguide.com. Of course, there's going to be, again, a link to them in the description below this video. So basically what they decided to do is obviously do their own benchmarks. We have seen a fair few leaks for Geekbench and so on surface for the Apple A12 recently. And what Tom's Guide actually found pretty much lines up with what we have seen previously with these leaked benchmarks. So on screen you will see a few benchmarks for the computing results, but we also have a pretty nice look at what's going on with the GPU here. So when compared to the S9, Note 9 and OnePlus 6, we do see some mixed results in graphics tests. They are lagging behind the Galaxy and the OnePlus 6 in 3D Mark Slingshot. Now, we do see the iPhone XS leading the way in GFX Bench 5.0 with a score of 1774.1, but we do see both variants lose out to the S Plus Sorry, the S9 Plus, excuse me, in Car Chase. Now, of course, we do see other results here again with video editing as well, and we are seeing the XS lead the way with in terms of transcoding, which obviously is exporting for some. That's what I call it personally. I export, I don't encode, but that's just a personal thing. And, of course, load times, we also see some nice results versus the Galaxy Note 9. So... As I said, it's a bit of a mixed up bag, really. We do see them, as I already said, lagging behind in 3D Mark. We see them lead the way with Aztec and, of course, car, um, losing up for car chase, but leading the way for editing. So it's by no means a curb stomp on either side, but a mixed up bag is not really what you want when it comes to a flagship device, especially when it's going to be rather expensive because, well, it's Apple. But, of course, we should wait for a gamut of tests to be tested by numerous people full reviews and so on and so forth but i'd love to hear your thoughts on this one guys and as i said there's going to be a full link to their article in the description below this video and i would highly recommend that you give that a look see because they go into way more detail than i currently am this is very much just the cliff notes as to what they actually discovered with their results so that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching as always your support is highly appreciated and i'll see you next time